Good evening. I want to welcome you to the telecast. My name is Kathy Ellis, and the name of this ministry is God's Power Surge, GPS for short, because I believe everyone needs direction in where they're going, and Jesus Christ is that direction. Now, this evening, as you can tell, we're going to be doing something a little different. So if you want to partake in communion, then you can get uh, your... Uh, uh, crackers and juice or bread and juice ready and uh, we will have a uh, communion this evening and uh, that's the way um, I'm going to go through some scriptures because communion is a blessed sacrament and we really need to make sure that we know how to do it properly um, as Paul had uh, talked in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, there are some ways that we need to look at things and do things properly with what the Lord has done with the Last Supper and, and partake of it in a way that it isn't harmful to us, as the scriptures say. But I'm going to start out in John, starting out, because Jesus, when he talked about uh, his uh, body and his blood is going to be shed, he talked about it in a very peculiar way that had people kind of puzzled uh, and still do when they read this. Um, but I want to try to explain it all to you. Um, and we're going to be in John chapter 6, uh, verses 53 through 58. And it says, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever eats on this bread will live forever. And here we go, here we go again, I should say. People are listening to him saying, eat your flesh, drink your blood. What are you talking about? But here we go, we're thinking literally. The Bible is a spiritual book, and all he is asking is for people to believe. Believe that he is the Messiah that come to shed his blood and to have his body broken for all of mankind's redemption. Because there is a reason for everything when he came and when he uh, went through all the suffering and torment that he did, the stripes on his body was for our healing, and, and he was bruised for our transgressions. Um, you know, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. You know, all these things. I mean, he ripped, they ripped out his beard and slapped him and, and did all sorts of things to him. And it's a miracle that he even lived to get to the cross. And in all reality, um, it was a gruesome thing. And the Passion of the Christ movie, a lot of people say, well, I can't stand to watch that. That's so brutal. Well, that's probably not even close to what all they did to him. Uh, and we need to really consider that and consider all that our Savior did for the redemption of our life. Because of the fall of mankind and the disobedience and the sin, it took a blood sacrifice to redeem us back to the Father, to where we could have an eternity, an eternity. Think about that, folks. This is just a temporary place. We're just sojourning here, just passing through. And we don't know when we're going to die, but the important thing is to be ready and live for Christ because he died for us. He is such an awesome Savior, and he loves us so much that he is wanting to get into every aspect of our life and live there to where we can sup with him and he with us. Now, 1 Corinthians 10, 16 through 17 says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ. 
The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, being many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. We partake of it. We commune. We take it in. And um, that's what it means to be a partaker. We are, we are taken in with it. We are becoming part of it. Partakers. <laughs> and then we go to Acts 2, verses 42. And it talks about, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. After... Um, they had received the Holy Ghost after Jesus had ascended. Um, they went on in the doctrine and the fellowship and breaking of the bread and in prayers. They continued to pray and break bread with one another, being part of one another, communing with one another. And in Acts 20, verse 7, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart in the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And what's funny about all this story, if you want to continue in, in Acts chapter 20, and it starts at verse 7, you know, they laughed about long-winded preachers. Well, Paul, he could talk about the Lord all day and all night. And in fact, he did here. And it talks about a young fellow who fell asleep. And he fell out of a window three stories high. But Paul went down, fell on him and embracing him and said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, he had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day. So he departed. He come back to life and a young man, and it said, and they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. They were much comforted knowing that all this that they are partaking in is real. That's why we need to see signs and wonders, not just signs and wonders, but when we're truly serving God and we're praying for people, we should be seeing results. Hallelujah. Because God hears our prayers. And unless we're not doing something that we should be doing, we need to really be praying earnestly, Lord God, help us be one with you. Help us, Lord God, root out anything that doesn't need to be in us and prepare us, Lord God. For your work, because it's God's work, lest any man should boast, we are not the ones doing it. It's God in us that is doing the works. Hallelujah. Doing this work of the Lord, because it's important work, and it's work that we need to really um, be serious about and be faithful to. Not just when you feel like it. Because let me tell you, if I did things when I felt like it, I wouldn't do much. Okay? And a lot of people live by how they feel. I don't feel like going to church today. I'll just stay home. And they do. And they miss out on a blessing. And you want to know why? This flesh wars with the spirit all the time. And when you don't feel like going, that's when you need to press forward and go. Because God has something for you there. And if you press forward and go, regardless of how you feel, hallelujah, you're going to forget about how bad you feel because you're going to be feeling fine when you leave church. And that's how it should be. When you're in the house of the Lord and you're praising and worshiping Him and having true church, hallelujah, not just some program, but having a true church, allowing God to move and work in the midst, because that's what He wants to do. You will leave there different than what you came in. 1 Corinthians 11, starting at the 17th verse. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, ye come together in the church, and I hear that there have been divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must also be heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. 
So he's telling them, hey, there's some things in you that's going on that I'm not too happy with. And it's being manifested. And things need to change. He says, when, we, when ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Okay? He's trying to teach them that when you come in, you're just not going to come in and eat and sit and then talk amongst each other like you do at a, at a church dinner. Okay? This Lord's Supper is different, and he's going to tell us why. We're not just going to come in and eat it when we get there and then sit down and chitty chatter. No, the Lord's Supper is different, and he's going to tell them why. For in eating, every one taketh before the other of his own supper, and one is hungry and the other is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat or drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. So he's explaining why when you come into the house of God for the Lord's Supper, it should be different than just a church dinner and a gathering. Because some may eat and some may not. And then, of course, he's talking about some being drunken. I hope not at a church dinner. <laughs> But when you come together at a dinner, you know, some people don't have much, and so they don't partake in it, or they're not allowed to in some cases. You never know. Um, but he wants this Lord's Supper to be inclusive to everybody and to be taken all together. Starting at verse 26. In 1 Corinthians 11, it says, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whatsoever shall, whatsoever shall eat, whosoever, sorry, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. And being worthy is having value, honorable, fit, or have sufficient worth. Something measured by its qualities, excellence, deserving of. So that's why he says in this next verse, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat. But let a man examine himself. I'm just going to stop there. We need to examine ourselves. You know, a lot of times we'll have communion and then we'll pray. I think that's backwards. I think we need to pray and prepare ourselves, then take communion. Because we need to make sure that we're ready, that we're not taking it unworthily. Because there's some things that can happen if we take this sacrament unworthily. And it says, For if he eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, not recognizing the Lord's body, not having reverence to it. We need to have reverence to the sacraments, to the communion, and what it means. Because Jesus sat down with the twelve at the table. And he told them, remember this. And so Paul is taking it a step further. He's saying, you don't take this unworthily. Because if you do, you're taking damnation unto yourself. So you need to prepare yourself for the taking of communion. And how do you do that? In prayer. When you prepare to do anything, praying is preparation. Praying. A lot of people are like, well, I don't know how to pray. Yeah, you do. You've poured your heart out to a good friend as they sat and listened. And that's all prayer is. 
pouring out your heart to a good friend named Jesus. He shed his blood to where we, get, we have that ability. He is the intercessor for our sins. He, he, he's our intercessor between God. And we are to pour out our heart to him. Because it's the heart that needs to be cleansed. Because within the heart is a lot of evil. And we need to say, Lord, if there's something in me rooted out, change me, Father. Root out all the evil thoughts, all the bitterness, all the hatred, all the anger. Root it out, Father, to where I can take this sacrament worthily. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Talking about many are dead. Because he took the sacraments, took communion unworthily. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when we come together to eat, tarry for one another. Let us wait on everybody to gather around to where we can all take and partake of the Lord's Supper together. And if any man is hungry, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. He's talking about we don't take this to satisfy hunger. We take this as a symbolism of what it is. Christ's body that was broken and Christ's blood that was shed to where we can tarry for one another and take this together for what it's for. To symbolize what Christ did for each and every one of us. How are we worthy? Through Christ, that's all. Through Christ are we only made worthy. So let us pray and get ready to take the communion. Lord God, as we've learned here in the scriptures of how we are to take communion and not to take it unworthily, Lord, we are praying to you tonight as we just open up our hearts to you, Lord God, and just tell you, Father God, that all the things that, that we need, Lord God, to be taken out of our heart, whether it's bitterness to a brother or sister or, or anger to our mother or father or, or anger to a neighbor or anger or in wrath to a workmate or whoever it is, Father God, a co-worker, um, or our, our spouses, Lord God, whatever it may be, Father God, root it out of us, Lord God, to where we can have peace, where we can have the peace of God enter in to where we know that we are now worthy to take this communion without it being damning to us and harmful to us. Because, Lord God, we don't want that. We want to come unto you worthy and prepared and ready and to really recognize the sacrifice that you took for us because you took our place because it was a debt that we couldn't pay and a price that we had no means of paying. But you did it. You did it so we could have redemption and salvation and have life and have it more abundant. And be joyful, even in the midst of the storms. Even the way of the world the, as it is now. The heaviness and the sorrow and the hopelessness that people are having. That we can show the hope of Christ to all. And Lord God, let us. Let us take this hope out to everybody, Father God. And help us, Lord God, to maintain our salvation 
through your blood and through your sacrifice, Lord God, help us, Father God, to, to be worthy through your blood, Lord God, and for what you've done in us to where we can take communion as a symbol of what you've done. Lord, we love you and we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Now, as we have everything ready, let's go to the 23rd through the 25th verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And given thanks, he break it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Lord God, we thank you for the breaking of your body. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done on the cross, Lord God, and on the way to the cross for us. And, Lord, we can never repay it, but, Lord, we serve you and we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, take and eat in remembrance. And after the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, we thank you for the shedding of your blood. Because without the blood there is no redemption of sin. And Father, help us, Lord God, to continue in your will until you return. And thank you for your precious blood. Oh, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Jesus. For only through you, Lord God, do we have a way, a way to come before the Father, Father. Oh, Lady Yadamahashandaradi, Lord, we thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Oh, for the redemption of our sins. Father, we, there are no words. There are no words, Father, for the thankfulness I feel right now. Oh, for your spirit, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy of all alms and glory, Father. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord God, meet needs, Father God. Hallelujah, as we've broken your, uh, for the body that was broken and the blood that was shed, Lord God, as we've taken this communion, Lord God, and, and Lord, have we, we've learned how to take it worthily, Lord, and, and we've asked you, Lord, to, to help us and to show us the way, Lord, as we continue on in your work, Lord God. Oh, we thank you and praise you, Lord Father. Oh, for being the light, Lord God, the lamp unto our feet and the light to our path. Hallelujah. That, that we, you lead us and guide us in all truth and righteousness, Lord. And the peace that we have in the midst of the storm. And as the world rages, Father God, the anger has increased and the sin, Lord God, is abounding. And what they call uh, good evil and evil good. And Lord, as we see your scriptures 
uh, revealing, Lord, that your coming is soon. Father God, help us stay prepared and ready for your coming. Lord, we just praise you tonight, Father, for your goodness and mercy on all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, your sweet spirit, Father. Oh, the anointing destroys the yokes. Oh, hallelujah. I hear chains breaking in the spirit. Hallelujah. Just raise your hands and praise him. Because he longs to hear from us. And he inhabits the worship of his people. And he loves, 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 loves when we praise and worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And give him thanks for all that he has done and all he's going to do. Seen and unseen, because he's always working on our behalf. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made i see the stars i hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. Thank you, Father. Oh. And when I think that God is Son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. For on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Now this is the good part. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art, then sings my soul. Savior God 
to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. I hope you've enjoyed this communion service as much as I have. The Spirit of the Lord is so good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And until next time, I hope that you are blessed.